Glenn here. Well, I'll let you guys do your interview, all right? I'll see you guys there. Okay, bro. Thanks. <laughs> Glenn Benton, you're in Nova Scotia, Canada, finally, for the yes. first time ever. So, um, how does it feel breeding our Nova Scotian air? That's Tasting nice, our man. lobster. I haven't uh, tasted the lobster okay. yet, but um, no, uh, it's been pretty good. I like the uh, no humidity thing going on. Yeah. So basically, life is uh, treating you very well. Um, has been pretty well, pretty good lately. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Excellent stuff. No complaints. I've just heard some uh, interesting stuff from your uh, upcoming album. There it is. Go ahead. <laughs> um, basically, you guys are going back to the roots. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, from what I've heard. Yeah. To you, what you feel of that? You know? well, I think it's like I think why the record turned out as good as it did is because the fact that. Everybody had a hand in the writing of it. It was kind of like the first album we ever did. It was like everybody got, you know, everybody had their hands in putting the whole thing together, you know, from the beginning to the yeah. end. And, and uh, having Kevin in the band and that, you know, brought a new, you know, breathed a little bit of new life into us and that. And, okay. I mean, we're tighter than we've ever been, you know. Speed for you as a basis. How do you like it? You know, uh, would you like to tame down a little bit more? No, I think it's right where it needs to be. I mean, I'm, for the first time ever, I'm pleased with my bass tracks on the album. I mean, because for the first time, we actually got to spend time, you know, okay. focusing on, you know, doing bass, you know, tracks instead of just get me in and get it over with to get, you know, to get the fucking record on time. You know, it was more like, you know, we're going to spend some time doing it. So we got, to, you know, I got to spend time doing the bass tracks and, you know, and being, uh, you know, improvising on, you know, on the songs and uh, it shows. Once the mix is finally done and now you'll be able to hear that, it'll be right in your face. Is recording getting easier for uh, Mr. Glenn uh, Benton? Because uh, the voice... last two weeks, man, we spent a solid two weeks doing vocals and uh, Jason brutalized the shit out of me in that, but he doesn't compromise and uh, it was nice, you know, man, does it, was it rough? Was it tough? Absolutely, but you know what? I think it shows and it pays off with the brutality of the vocals, you know. How's your voice keeping up up to now? You know, from the beginning, you know, of your career to now, you're you're still doing it even more stronger. It's, you know what? I've learned. It's it's uh, I've learned how to control myself. You know, now if I go out there and I if I go out there and and don't use that control, right. then I can throw myself, throw my voice, and I've learned recently to uh, control it and not you know. You know, in the beginning of a set, you know, instead of going balls to the wall for you know for the first four songs in a row on that, you know, cause if I don't control that, it will definitely you know harm me. In that. But if I just keep that control and just you know keep a lid on it and you know use some restraint, then it um, it makes me stronger. So. Let's say when a DSI reaches the age of eighty, there, you know, uh, playing a new album, you know, thirty years from now, forty, yeah. fifty years, is the voice still going to be the same? <laughs> You know, how do you see your voice in the future? Is it going to keep up? Oh, it's just so bad that everybody stays healthy and everybody's, you know, and if that's the case, I'm, I've got several left in me. Okay. Music scene in 100 years from now, in your eyes, where do you see the uh, evolutionizing with, you know, speed and stuff? Because we're getting very fast right now. Uh, I don't know, man. It's hard to say. It's like it just keeps coming back, repeating itself and that. And, uh, to me, I mean, there's a, an element of lameness coming into it, you know, and you know, like, yeah. because it's so easy to cheat at doing this, and there's not very many people out there that are keeping the actual uh, reality of it there, you know. They're just letting the pro tools and not do all the work for them. Right. I just, I don't know, man. Well, have to wait and see. I, I hope it stays brutal in that, but uh, like I say, man, it seems to be, you know. I can't really listen to the new stuff because it's you know, that deathcore shit. It's yeah. just you know, it's it's like all sounds the fucking same. To but me. deathcore seemed all the kids of today, you know, that would have been in the nineties, buying the DSI Legion yeah. at that time, are buying the deathcore stuff. Well, just now. like I watched fucking Nirvana and all that fucking grunge shit fall down the toilet. I'll watch that fall down the toilet and still be doing what I'm doing. So, mm -hmm. I say, uh, it, just like uh, I mean, just with every kind of music, you're gonna have a few bands that stay. The rest are gonna fall off. Yeah. So, same with that. These sides have been powerful, you know, at least in Canada for a long time. The uh, rest of the world, where's the best places, you know, for your name? I don't know, it's pretty good everywhere we go. Yeah. I mean, you got, you know, certain markets that are, you know, obviously bigger South America and stuff like that. But, um, oh man, we maintain a good business.
because I'm sure, like, let's say you go to South America, the people don't get to see you that often. Every year, man, you grab a new audience, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like the younger generations pick up on that, you know, what we're doing, you know, 20 years, you know, ago, and they pick up on it, and, uh, yeah, man, it's for good, you know, good shows, you know, I just, the thing is, man, you can't overplay yourself, you can't, you know, spread yourself too thin, because when you spread yourself too thin, right. and, you know, it hurts, you know, your attendances and that, so you just have to tend to just to go here and there and, you know, not overplay and not oversaturate, you know, right. and spread ourselves too thin. So. Let's say I'm um, hearing, you know, throughout the years playing loud music. I'm deaf. If, so you're having a hard time here now? I, yeah, I'm pretty deaf. So no protection throughout the I still years? I can't wear protection. Yeah. No. Never been one for foot wearing protection in any aspect of my life. <laughs> How many interviews do you do in a year nowadays? How you uh, doing? Not very many at all. No? Your interviews the first one I've done in a couple of years. Wow. Yeah, Am I uh, that blessed in DSI to uh, well, get? I don't know. This, this is I was going to blow you off when I found out who you were, but that <laughs> wasn't, yeah. Is Glenn actually a nice guy after all? Yeah, yeah. Get soft at my old age. Yeah. So, Glenn? <laughs> The next five albums of DSI, are they going to still be? Uh, I think if we maintain the uh, the present uh, lineup, I think it's just going to get sicker, man. Yeah. yeah. I think what we're going to throw in everybody's face in November is going to be a clear indication that things are, you know. With your career, are are you happy to root it? Talk, like let's say from the beginning to now, do you expect it to uh, last this long? I never been. Yeah, I thought I'd be driving a school bus by now. Really? Yeah. There's one time uh, you'd say. Uh, when you reach the age of 33, that you're gonna disappear and all this no, stuff. Oh man, past it. what it was, we were all getting drunk at a bar and we were all talking stupid and talking out of our asses and I made that statement and it's swallowed me my whole life. So then it goes on ladder mount and from there. It's ridiculous, man. But like I said, I'm still doing it and I enjoy doing it and, and as long as the fans keep supporting us and buying records and you know doing all that, it keeps us doing it, you know. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes it's like with any job, you know, you get sick of it sometimes and that, but when you sit back and you look at the full picture and the reality of the situation, what the fuck else am I going to do? Mm. You know, it's who I am. So, do I keep doing it? Yeah. Well, you do a good job. Thanks. Very good job. Enjoy I mean, um, what do you think of the video footage of yourself um, as I am on, I do believe, um, playing the TV show in like 88? You ever see that Florida? It was a Gene St. Maria talent show. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those things where it's, we were, you know, we were just scraping at any opportunity we could get. And I got in contact with that guy after seeing the, you know, some crappy local bands on that thing. And, yeah. and uh, I wanted to do it. And some other people weren't too much keen on doing it, but I talked to everybody into doing it. And we did it. Yeah. And it was, you know, I mean, it's looking at it today, you know, people are still pulling that shit up. Yeah. And uh, the green paint on the face at yeah. one era. Yeah. And then the mask in one era, the serpents of the light, I do I've believe. done a lot of different things. Yeah. I followed your career. Thanks. Years, you know, um, let's just say that the story, of my story for DSI is I go to, uh, what is it? It wasn't HMV, it was another little store. I'm mm -hmm. looking cassettes and I see Amon feasting the beast. Right. I pick it up. These guys look very, very interesting and brutal. My mother buys a cassette, <laughs> put it in the car. She's first, first thing she says is, what is this? Right. I'm like, that's interesting music. Right. You know, uh, just went from there, you know, and then, oh, there's an album before that which I bought the first DSI album right. after Ron Cassette and then uh, Legion eventually. Right. Yeah. And then when you guys released that Once Upon the Cross, right. the artwork, whose idea was that? That was mine. Yeah? yeah. And somebody drew, drew it and then... I had the idea for it and I uh, had uh, been in contact with an artist named Trevor Brown and, and uh, asked him if he'd do it and gave him the idea and he sent me some sketches back and I was like, ah, cool, go with it. So. Uh, I uh, had Roadrunner commission the artwork and paid mm. for it. And I mean, back in '95 when that came out, I don't think it was blocked. Now I think if you buy it, it's blocked. You can't see the the artwork at all. Right. But at the day I bought it, you could see it. And at least in Canada, that would have happened for a couple of months until they decided it's too obscure or too uh, graphic. Right. You know, uh, 
but you've uh, entertained us throughout the years. Yeah, well, and, uh, I enjoy what I do, man. You guys will see tonight. I'm gonna tear this place apart. And your cross on your forehead still, still there. Still there. Yeah. All for life. Uh, yeah. I can't see it going anywhere unless yeah. I go smashing my head into something else and changing its appearance. Right. I had a plastic surgeon tell me, I asked him about it and you know getting rid of it and he's like, well, I always want to do that. It was killer. <laughs> <laughs> With his confirmation, that's why I've left it all these years. Okay. Well, excellent stuff. It does good for you. I don't even notice it. Okay. Uh, my kids don't notice it. My lady doesn't know. But you've been around me for a long time, you don't even kind of get past all that. Well, Glenn, it's been a real pleasure to have oh, you nice in, in friggin' uh, oh. Halifax, finally. It took, you know what, 15, 20 years to get DSI here, <laughs> and now it's you're... Gonna gonna, it's going to be fun tonight. Yeah, people are going to go nuts. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. I'm all for it. Keep up the good work, Glenn. Cool. Steve, as well. And uh, just keep on doing it, you know, never stop. Really? I yeah. mean, for us fans. You know, I have no plans on stopping. Good. What we do. Pleasure. Awesome.